All right. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming today. Opening day of the Florida State League, and we have Rachel Balkovec here with the Tampa Tarpons manager, who is starting today the first ever female manager in affiliated baseball. So with that, we'll open it up for some questions. Morning. Hi, I'm Carrie Sheridan with the NPR station WUSF. Um, are you aware of your status as an inspiration to other women in this field? And can you tell, talk to us about who your inspirations have been? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely aware. Thankfully, I've had about 10 years to prepare for um, something like this. So it's been ongoing throughout the years of all of, uh, young women reaching out, older women reaching out, dads, girl dads reaching out. So I'm definitely highly aware of it, and it definitely drives my actions pretty much every day, honestly. It's something I think about every day. And I, when I think about somebody who inspires me, or at least who uh, early on was somebody who I look to, it's definitely Sue Falsoni. Um, she was with the Dodgers in 2008, I think was the first year she was hired as a physical therapist with the Dodgers. And I just remember that was about the time when I was starting to get into baseball, and it was really impactful for me to know that there was a woman doing anything you know, on the field at that time. It was really impactful for me. and so. I definitely remember like reading the article that she, when she was hired and, and having that be a source of inspiration for me um, to get into strength and conditioning and professional baseball. So her name definitely comes to mind along with many other people, but she was a really important person for me early on. want to go into baseball in the first place and then also make the transition from strength and conditioning into coaching and in specifics? I would say getting into professional baseball specifically was always about the player development system. So I, uh, unlike many other people, it's like I was never really uh, about the glitz and the glam of like being in the big leagues and necessarily, you know, I didn't grow up necessarily going, oh, I, I love baseball and all this stuff. It was really when I started to learn more as I got into my career about the player development system and uh, Latin America and, and just the really long journey that these minor league players go on, go on that that's when I really got interested in um, not just baseball, but specifically professional baseball as a career. And then a hitting coach, um, you know, as a strength coach, I was a strength coach in baseball for seven seasons, and I realized somewhere along the line that I think that I thought that my path was in leadership, and uh, eventually I want to be a general manager. And so you have to close the gap between strength and conditioning coach and general manager. So the first step for me was, okay, let me be an on-field coach. And I had great mentors um, with the Houston Astros and, and specifically in Dylan Lawson, our current major league hitting coach uh, with the Astros who kind of pushed me in that direction as well. And so I crossed over to being a hitting coach um, so that I could get closer to on-field evaluation, player moves, trades, understanding kind of the more the inner workings as opposed to simply performance um, and eventually getting closer to a leadership role. Hi, Rachel. Hi, I'm Liz. I work at Channel 10. We're the CBS affiliate. Congratulations. Um, so two questions. First, just how do you feel ahead of tonight's game? What kind of emotions do you have? And then also, can you tell us some of the unique challenges in coaching a bunch of young men? How do I feel? Uh, <laughs> I mean, I would say that I could, um, I could benefit from a little bit of sleep right now. I'll just answer it like that. Um, but overall, I feel really excited. And kind of segue into the second question is, I feel excited because it's like, thankfully I'm in the best case scenario to accept a role like this because I had a lot of these players last year and I already know them. Um, one's back in the back of the room, Antonio Gomez, but also a lot of other players who I'm already really, really familiar with and they're familiar with me. And so it's like, I'm excited you know, for the night because of what's going on, but also I'm just excited for the season because it's like, you know, these are like, my guys, you know, so I'm just excited for the roster that we have in general. And I'm just, it's already been a lot of fun. There's a lot of loud music. There's a lot of energy with this team. And I'm just excited to be with this team specifically. So it, that makes it a lot easier and smoother given all of the potential um, distractions, not to call you all distractions, but that could be going on. Uh, Hi, Rachel, over here, uh, Nathan McBorski from Yankees Magazine. Uh, you know, one of the roles uh, of a manager is to establish sort of a, a culture in that clubhouse. What sort of culture do you hope to establish with the Tarpons, and, and does that begin today on opening day? Uh, it, it began, um, I would say, our first practice, which was a few days ago, which, to give you an idea, just, I mean, we basically showed up to practice, and, and without me really saying much, it turned into a giant competition where they're all kind of talking trash to each other, and. Um, 
had a ton of fun, even at just the first practice in the, in the past few days. And the music is loud, and that's how we want it. You know, the energy is high, and it's just a, a, an environment where we're having fun. But we talked about in our first meeting, you know, having fun is, is all relative. And, and in my mind, winning is fun, and having success is fun. You know, and so if we can say, oh, we want to be relaxed and have fun, but also we want to push and be able to compete. And so that's something that we talked about in our first meeting, and that's kind of the culture. It's, it's already been set, but it's, again, I'm just fortunate that I'm not necessarily the only one setting that. It's like it's the players that are immediately jumping in and going, okay, we're picking teams. We're competing against each other. They want to compete. They want to, um, they want to have a high-energy environment, and they're not necessarily concerned with just relaxing and getting through their days and talking about a long season and, and those things that we're just not going to talk about because we're going to continue to compete all year. Hi, Holly Kane with the Gannett Newspapers. I wanted to ask you a little bit about, have you had somebody, this is a new position for you, obviously, have you had somebody that kind of you, I wouldn't say leaned on, but maybe got some advice, or maybe there's somebody that's offered you something that said, wow, this is something I really might want to incorporate in the way I manage, or anything like that? Uh, I mean, it takes a village. It's been like, it's been literally everyone <laughs> almost everyone in, in the Yankees organization that every single day I'm picking up a tip from one person or another. Uh, definitely Ryan Hunt, one of our um, defensive coordinators, is, is a guy who's been with me every step of the way since I showed up January 15th. Um, Kevin Reese is in the room. He's been extremely helpful. But also, I can't even name everybody. It's been everyone. You know, the amount of messages that I've got this morning from Yankees coaches and employees is incredible. And it's been all angles of support. So. Um, it's, it's been just about everyone I can think of that's been giving me tips that have been extremely helpful. So, Hi, John Brophy from uh, Pinstripe Prospects. What have the last few weeks and days been like as uh, spring training wrapped up been like um, in going into the manager role? Well, a few weeks ago I got hit in the face, so I would say that wasn't ideal. Um, so about seven days of bed rest was not ideal in the middle of spring training while I'm trying to adjust to a new role. Um, but again, it's just been, it's been very hectic, as you can imagine, and there's no, there's no secrets. This is a new role for me uh, in, many, in many ways, but also I've just had so much support that, and I will continue to have support that no matter how many mistakes I'm going to make, which I've already made about a billion, you know, uh, there's more coming, and I just know that I have a ton of support from the organization and from the players, and just being honest about my strengths and weaknesses. And if they can't respect that, then I don't know what they can respect. So it's been uh, hectic. It's been learning a lot of new things and also been a blast and, and feel you know, as ready as I can be. Rachel, Kevin Lewis uh, from WFTS. Uh, in your Zoom call, your initial Zoom call, you talked about you went on the list of how many times you were told no. And you know, because somebody told you because you were a woman. And you were in the Netherlands on a borrowed mattress or something like at any point I mean a lot of people could have stopped or said okay this really isn't for me just when you go through all that it just was there ever a moment when you said well, I don't know and, and how kind of take us through then till you know your first game tonight uh, I don't know if I can go through all of that because it's too long but I could ju I can just say you know my parents are sitting in the back of the room they know uh, and they probably are gonna laugh at this but it's like they you know they saw me at like very low points of uh, low points of money <laughs> low points emotionally all the low points they know, and it's, it's been 10 years of just working to this point. I would say the early years for sure um, is when, again, I would say I had almost no support in some ways because there were no women. So things have evolved since then. Obviously, I was blatantly discriminated against back then. Some people say not to say that, but it's just a part of what uh, has happened. And also just I think it's important to say because it lets you know how much change has happened. So blatant discrimination, that was, you know, 2010-ish, and now here we are 12 years later, and I'm sitting up here at a press conference, and I'm a manager. So tons of change. It definitely had some dark times in many different ways. Um, transitioning to being a hitting coach and making that transition was also extremely difficult. I had to make some really difficult decisions in my career to keep going. Um, if you're asking me why I did that, I, it's just like at some point you have to look at yourself and go, what is my purpose on this planet? And if I don't do this, who else is going to come behind me and do it? And if, and if the answer is, okay, it's just me, then I don't feel like I really have a choice. You know, that's, that's how I felt, I would say, in like 2012, 2013, 
And then again in 2018, 19, when I was switching over to being a hitting coach, I know that I'm capable of doing this. I know that I'm the right person for it. I know that being a, a woman, I know that I can get respect in any room that I walk into. So if I choose not to do that and I know I have the opportunity, then it's disrespectful to other women who've come behind me and done that for me. So that's why I kept going. Addressing kind of more recently, I think that again, it's like, guys, when I first got hired full time in 2014, there was no social media. There was no any, like I got hired full time and like no one, there was no press. There, you could try to go fight back and find press. There was none. Now I'm sitting in the front of a room of people and there's a giant press conference. It's, it's like mind blowing to me, you know? So this time around, I feel like I have to tip my cap to the Yankees and just say like, I don't really feel like I'm making history. I feel like the Yankees are making history because for me, I've, I have made some difficult decisions in my career that have required a lot of discipline and a lot of, uh, you know, sleeping on uh, mattresses that I pulled out of a dumpster, those things. This case, it wasn't, it wasn't that, you know, it's like the world has changed, society has changed, baseball has changed. This was simply the organization saw potential in somebody and asked me to be in that role, Kevin Reese. And, and uh, some of you may, not, may or may not know, we didn't tell anyone <laughs> when, when I signed my contract because it just felt like it was the next normal step and that we didn't need to tell anyone, you know, and then that's the greatest indicator of change. So it's, you know, I don't want to say it's not a big deal, but it didn't feel that way. It felt like this was a normal role change inside of an organization and the Yankees deserve credit for that. It's just, you know, it's this time it didn't feel like uh, I didn't have to sleep on a mattress out of a trash bin. So uh, lots of change, lots of positive change. And I went, I've gone through a lot. It's too long to, to stay in this press conference, but happy to be here now. Hey, Rachel, Don Clemish with MLB.com. Um, where'd you get hit in the face, first of all? I, was it like a foul oh. ball or a miscatch? How did I get yeah. in the face? Uh, I, was flipping in, I was flipping balls in the cage, and a, a guy just took a late swing, or I, I put the flip in the wrong place, and, and uh, took a little trip to the emergency room. Antonio's laughing at me in the back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm obviously lucky to be sitting here. I'm lucky that my face looks as good as it does. <laughs> um, you know, we're, everything's good. I talked to uh, Aaron Boone and Nick Swisher yesterday and, and they said, man, you should hear her yell at somebody in Spanish. They were so impressed. <laughs> like, it was just funny that, you know, with your team dynamic and you're in charge of men now, like, how is it received to them, you know, the first time that you do have to raise your voice or be assertive or, you know, any of those things that maybe people will think about. Antonio, how does it feel when I raise my voice at you? <laughs> uh, I, I, think, I think that, honestly, every time I join an organization, there's a little bit of curiosity. So it's like the first couple of weeks, maybe there's some uncertainty or guys don't know me very well or whatever. And then within two weeks or, or even probably within 24 hours, they know the deal, right? If I can walk in front of a room, speak confidently, know what I'm talking about, oh, and then I can say in Spanish too, it's like, okay, uh, all right, this, is, this woman is about business and this is, this is a job, she's a professional. I really think it doesn't take too long for them to figure out you know, that I'm just a coach. You know? And uh, eventually they just kind of forget and be themselves around me. Um, and once they have that level of respect for me and also vice versa, if I have respect for them, if I raise my voice at them, it's like out of love and not like they feel threatened by me or that they, you know, they're mad or whatever, I could raise my voice and then five minutes later, we're back to normal. In that vein, is it, are, are you kind of maybe eager to get today behind you so you can actually put all your focus on your actual job instead of entertaining us every couple days? I mean, yeah, I'm, I would say that would be nice. And also I truly believe that this is my job. I don't think that you can sign your name on a piece of paper in this situation and not accept also the other responsibilities that come along with that. Kelly Catwin, Fox 13 here in Tampa. Um, and I'll just give you a little background on why I'm asking this question. I was the first girl to play on my high school football team. And so I know every day for the first two weeks, it was a thing. A month in, it was no longer a thing until we started playing against other teams. And then when other teams right. would see my ponytail sticking out, it'd become a thing again. So is it something that you experience on a daily basis? Does your gender come up? Or how often do you say, would you say that you're reminded I might be the only woman in the room, in the clubhouse, in, in the entire stadium at this point. 
Um, it's honestly, I forget. I forget about it until it's a new thing, a new organization. I'm taking a new role now. Or as you mentioned, I think if you are in this clubhouse or in this organization, you know it's just not a big deal. And I think teams looking across could go, wow, how does that work? Or how does she fit in? Or how, whatever. And like, if you're in the clubhouse, you know that I asked Chandler Champlain to uh, be DJ in our first meeting, you know, so it's fine, you know, it's fine. Uh, there's definitely some things that I'm reminded of, right, reminded of, like the clubhouse setup or whatever that I'm like, okay, oh, I forgot, I'm a woman. Okay, this is how this is gonna go. It's gonna be a little different. Um, but overall, I say like you blend in very quickly and I think the outside perception is really um, actually usually pretty far off from what actually happens. Uh, Rachel, just opening day. I mean, to anybody who's been in baseball for as long as you have, those two words are like magic. Uh, what do those two words mean to you and how different is this particular opening day compared to all the previous ones you've had? Just feeling really grateful. I'm thinking about, you know, like I said, Sue Falsoni and thinking about Gene Afterman, who I'm lucky enough to be in the same organization as. And again, going back to like, you know, Cashman and the Steinbrenner family, they've been progressive way before it was cool, you know. Hiring Kim Ang and hiring Gene late 90s, like that they didn't get any you know positive press for that. I'm pretty sure, or they there there wasn't the you know celebrating women in sports the way that the, the way that we are now. So just feeling really grateful that I'm in this organization in particular. I'm grateful that I have the support of the players, that I have their respect, and I'm excited just like anyone else is on opening day. Just that kind of that that excitement that you get the first game. Everyone's all smiles. Um, so every opening day is special. This one is definitely a little different, um, but it kind of feels the same. And as soon as I leave this room, it's going to be, you know, crank up the music and, and get our practice going. And it's going to feel, I think, pretty much the same. Catherine Smith with Spectrum Bay News 9. Representation is so important. What does it mean to you that there's going to be a little girl that comes to one of your games and sees you and says, I, I can do that one day? Again, it's just, it's, it's my job. You know, it's like you get, I just don't believe that you can be in a role like this and not also consider those things. And it's something that we want to also tell the players, right? Like if, you, if you're wearing this uniform, and especially if you're the major league clubhouse, you are a role model, whether you like it or not, people are looking at you. So you can either choose to shy away from that or just not do a good job of it. Or you can choose to lean into it and be there for that and show up for them because somebody showed up for you before. And many women have done many things before I got this role to make sure that I could be here. So it's like, if I say I don't wanna do that or don't want to be part of that, it's selfish, it's disrespectful to the women who've come before me, and it's just a part of my job, whether I like it or not. Whether I wanted to wake up early, whether I wanted to take time away from my day to be here or not, it's my job, and I, I do want to do that anyway, so no worries, but, um, but yeah, I just, I don't think, really think I have a choice. Holly Kane again with Gannett. I'm just curious a little bit about your background. Were you one of the girls that wanted to play football or were you, you know, throughout growing up? And are you in your family? Do you have brothers, sisters? What, what is the makeup? <laughs> My mom is sitting right behind you and she laughed when you asked that. Um, did I want to play football? Hmm, I can't remember. Uh, no, yeah, when I was in fourth grade, I, I said that I wanted to be the first female kick, kicker in the NFL. I don't know why, I, it's, it's just funny to me to think back at that time, I was 10 and I said I wanted to be the first female to do something. I'm not exa exactly sure why. You reflect back on those times, I mean at the time it was, I, I remember knowing about Serena Williams, I remember knowing about Brandi Chastain and, and the 99ers who won the, the uh, World Cup and I remember having some young uh, influences as a young woman that were female athletes and I don't know why I said I wanted to be the first female something but I guess I, guess I was seeing into the future. Um, but absolutely, I was a tomboy. I was definitely a girl who was always a very aggressive athlete. And uh, I have two sisters who were also very aggressive athletes growing up. And um, you can thank Bonnie and Jim Balkovic for that because they made us, you know, they made us, they treated us as capable young people and not, oh, well, you're a girl, so you do this and this is how this goes. It was just that I really didn't know any different. I just knew I was a really competitive athlete and I didn't really think to myself, oh, well, I'm a girl, so I can't be like this. I just thought I wanna be the best that I can be at, at everything. 
Um, and so I started that work ethic extremely young, thanks to my parents. And I was always very aggressive, um, going after just about anything that I wanted, and nothing has really changed since then. So, yeah, I've, I've, if you're asking me, have I always been like this? The answer is yes, <laughs> I have. Yes. Yeah, I mean, Billie Jean King, like I just, I, that's something that I think about. It's like, if I don't want to be doing this or I don't want to go through these challenges that I have, which by the way are, are minimal compared to what Billie Jean King went through. You know, she signed a contract for $1 to play professional tennis. She is a, definitely an icon in my mind of a person that I think about like, okay, I don't want to be doing this or I don't have time or whatever. And I'm like, no, Billie Jean did this for me. This is what I have to do now for whoever else that I'm helping out in the future. I think about women like that all the time. I think about Jean all the time. You know, it's like Jean has, Jean's been doing it since I was born, you know? So I, it, it'd be selfish of me to say, oh, I, I don't have time for this or that, or that. That's disrespectful to women who've come before me. If you want to know other two role models, they're sitting in front of you. If you want to know why I'm here, it's them. If you want to know why I'm aggressive and if you want to know, you know, guys in the back, if you want to know why I'm uh, hard on you, it's because my parents were hard on me. You know, they, they raised me to be set up for success once I left their home. To, in my in my professional career. Any other questions? One more. One last one, just about your team. I mean, I know a, a lot of people are going to be interested to see Jason Dominguez out there, but who else should we be keeping an eye on? Who are you excited to see? Oh, um, just throw out like a couple of names that maybe <laughs> don't you don't hear a lot. I would say for sure, uh, check out Grant Richardson's power. Uh, Connor Cannon might wait, make one disappear into the night. Um, some names I'm really excited about, just some guys on the roster who maybe you don't hear about all the time, Benny, Benny Cowles um, as well. So just some other guys that you might want to keep an eye on that you don't hear all the time. Um, just a uh, heads up for those, for those players. We have, Yuli, Tyrone. oh my gosh, what am I thinking? Yuli, I just texted him this morning. I wrap it up. Any other questions? All right. Thank you for your time, Rachel. Good luck. Tonight. Thank you.